Hello everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the leak code problem number 200, number of islands. Now, this is a very common problem asked in a lot of big tech companies like Google, Uber, Microsoft, and many more. And the reason why I like this problem a lot is because I feel it's a very good introductory problem to understand how we can use breadth first search on a matrix, which, spoiler alert, we're going to be using breadth first search to solve this problem. I should also mention that depth first search works here as well, but for the purposes of this video and to keep it a reasonable length, I'll just be focusing on breadth first search. If you want me to cover the depth first search solution, then I can make a follow up video to that. In any case, let's take a look at the problem. So we're given an m by n 2D binary grid, which represents a map of ones and zeros, which mean land and water respectively. Our goal at this problem is to return the number of islands within the given grid. So real quick, we'll have a matrix with strings of either one or zero, which represent land or water. And the island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So it's important to understand the second half of the problem description here because land is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. So let me underline that, connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. This is an important concept to understand because it does not mention diagonal, either up and down or left and right. And this is very common when dealing with matrices because that's just the nature of traversing matrices. It's either up, down, left, or right. There is no diagonal unless the problem specifically specifies it. But in this case, we can only look horizontally or vertically. And then it says you may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So that would mean just everything outside of here. So without further ado, let's take a look at our first example. So as you can see here, we have our grid and then our output is one. So this means that within this grid, there's only one island. And so because we know that one equals land and zero is water, just by simply looking at the grid, we can see that all of this is land. All these ones represent land in our grid, and then everything else outside of it, all these zeros are just water. So as you can see, we just have this one big landmass, which represents one island. So therefore our output would be one. So now let's take a look at our drawing over here, which is still of example one. And I'm going to explain how this algorithm is going to work. We're going to start with the top left corner of our grid right here. So this algorithm, we want to count the number of islands in the grid and an island is made up of contiguous ones. So the landmass is just a bunch of ones that are all right next to each other. And eventually at some point that landmass comes to an end when it meets a bunch of zeros, which represent water in this case. So starting in this corner, we want to look horizontally and vertically. And so in this case, that would mean looking right and down because we know the outside of the grid is just surrounded by water, looking up and to the left is not gonna yield any landmass. So now that we look right and down, we still need to keep exploring because there might be more landmass for us. So in the case of this one, we will repeat the process and explore further. Now, the thing that's important to note here is that we've already counted a one as part of our landmass. We don't wanna look at it again. So as we continue our exploration, we will not look at past ones, which means in this case, we will not take a look at this one. And the reason for that is just simply because we don't want to enter some sort of infinite loop recounting the same landmass over and over again. And so that tells us that our algorithm is going to need a way to track coordinates that we visited. In any case, we will keep the exploration going. So now starting with this coordinate, we will look to the right and then down. So we can explore like so. And then now with this coordinate, we will do the same. Again, we can't look at our previous landmass because we've already looked at that one. And this is already being processed but we haven't explored down here. And then the process continues. So starting right here, we will explore. We can't explore left because we've already processed this landmass. We can't go up because we know that's water. We know down is water because here's a zero, so we can only explore to the right. So then we will take a look at this one. And the same goes for these two. So this one, we look to the right and we know that's a zero, so we can't explore further, but then we look down and there's more land. And then with this one, we look over we're already processing this one, and then we look down, that's water, so we ignore it. So now we have a new group of lands to process. So now we have two more pieces of land that we're looking at. And then finally, after everything is said and done, we will process our last bit of landmass. So again, repeating the process, we'll look at this landmass right here, and we can't look at previously looked at landmasses. So all we can do is just look right, which is just water, 
and then we'll look down, which, which in the case of our problem is the last bit of land left unexplored on our island. So then we can process this last bit of land like so. And then taking a look at this one, we will explore right and down and see that we've reached the end of our island in this area. So an important thing to note here is that as you can see on our grid, starting with the first coordinate, we are slowly expanding outwards. As you can see indicated by these colors, we're moving outwards and incrementally exploring contiguous pieces of land. All right, so hopefully it's starting to make a bit more sense. As you can see, I drew rings around the groups of the expanding search space right here. So hopefully it's easier to see how, when we're starting at this coordinate, we're slowly expanding our search for land outwards. Now, I've already mentioned this earlier in the video, but this is exactly what Breath First Search looks like, or BFS. And BFS fits really well here because what we're doing is we're slowly expanding outwards so we can try to find the edges of a certain landmass, or island in this case. And once we find the edge of this island, then we can increment our count of islands. So in this case, we'll just have islands equal one. And so this is pretty much how our algorithm will work. Now, before we go to the code walkthrough, I wanna take a look at one more example just to really drive home the idea in your head. All right, so here we're gonna be taking a look at our second example here. So again, following the same process as before, when we look at our grid, we'll start at the top left corner right here. Our goal now is to explore this island. So we'll explore horizontally and vertically. We know that if we look up or left, we'll encounter water or zero in this case. So our only option is to explore right and down. Now, remember when we explore, we have to put the current piece of land or coordinate in this case, because it's in a matrix, in a data structure to help us track where we've been, because we don't wanna be revisiting this piece of land if we've already looked at it. So now exploring outward, we will look rightwards and down. And again, we repeat the same process. We make sure to track these coordinates so we don't revisit them again, and then we explore outwards. So starting with this coordinate, we will look right and down. And by looking down, we find our final piece of land. And then by the time we get here, we've already explored this bit of land. And so after all the processing is done, this will count as one island. So we'll increment our island counter by one. Now you might be thinking, well, there's a one right here. Shouldn't we count this as part of the island? Or shouldn't this at least connect this bit of land to this island? Now remember, the problem says connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. I was saying at the beginning of the video that we do not count diagonally. Because imagine this, looking at this final bit of land, we can either explore to the right or downwards. We can't look over here because we've already looked at these bits of land. So there's no way for us to look at this. So by the constraints of this problem, this is a separate island on its own. And so when we encounter it, we'll essentially just increment our island counter by one, so now this will be two. And so we keep looking through our matrix. We know all this is water, and then eventually we'll come across this. So starting with this bit of land, all we can really do here is just explore to the right, which gives us our final island and incrementing our island counter to three, which makes sense because the output stated here is three. There are three islands in this grid. I hope so far that you have a pretty good understanding of how our algorithm is going to work. Now, a couple more things before I start coding. First, I wanna talk for a second on why Breath First Search is a good choice for this problem. You see, whenever you're faced with a problem that makes use of a matrix or a grid like we have here, and the problem is asking you to either count things in the grid or explore connected components, then that's usually a giveaway that Breath First Search is necessary to solve the problem. Because as you can see with the number of islands, Every time we encounter one or a bit of land, we explore outward to find the edge of this island. And then once we've explored the island thoroughly, we increment the count and then continue looking for more islands to add to our island count. And then we repeat the process looking for more islands. And so that's just one thing I wanted to highlight because whenever you encounter a problem, there's usually some kind of pattern that you can follow. So it's your job to look at the problem and understand it and try to see what kind of pattern that you can use to more effectively solve the problem. So for future reference, if you come across a problem that gives you a matrix as an input that involves you either counting things or exploring connected components within the matrix or both, that's usually a giveaway that breadth first search is the optimal solution. And on the same note, 
Usually anytime you can use breath first search, you can also use death first search. But again, I feel like this video is going on longer than I anticipated, so if you want to see the DFS solution for this, let me know and I can make a follow-up video. But regardless, in the case of this problem, DFS will not change the runtime, just the implementation. Essentially, it's just another way to get the same result. Now finally, before we go to the code, the last thing I want to talk about is time and space complexity. So the time complexity for this problem is going to be O of M times N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. And then the space complexity is going to be the same as well, M times N. And the reason for this is because in the worst case, let's say our entire grid is filled with ones, so this entire grid would be an island, then the size of our queue that we're going to be using for our breadth first search solution is going to equal the number of ones in our matrix, which would be m times n. All right, now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the code. So first things first, let's kick things off with some input validation. So in our case, we just want to check if our matrix or grid is not empty. In the event that it is empty, we'll just simply return zero, because if we don't have a grid, then we can't count any islands. So that's just a quick check we can make at the beginning to start us off. And then next, we're gonna define our rows and columns. So we'll define this as variables called rows and calls, and this will just be length of grid, and then length of grid zero. Pretty straightforward, also very helpful because we can just refer to rows or calls instead of doing length grid or length grid zero. So it just makes things a bit cleaner. We have to have a way to keep track of the coordinates that we visited. Because remember, we don't want to keep looking at the same piece of land on an island. It's crucial to track areas that we've already visited. And so in Python, we can simply do this by creating a variable called visited and then just creating a set. So we can just define coordinates as tuples and then we can throw that into our set and then we can always check to make sure that whenever we look at a new piece of land, we can check to see if that coordinate has already been looked at in our visited set. And then like the problem statement says, we can only look horizontally or vertically, or in other words, up, down, left, or right. And so just to make our lives easier, we can have a variable called directions and we can specify all four directions. And so we can create a list of tuples which will allow us to move in four possible directions. So we'll have down, up, right, and left. And so just to make our lives easier, we can iterate through directions and then just add each individual coordinate, this X and Y, to our current X and Y to move us in that particular direction. Again, you don't have to do this, but this is just what I usually do when I code out breadth first search problems. It just makes my life easier. And then of course we have to keep track of our island. So we'll have an island count variable, which will start at zero. So now that we have these basic variables out of the way, we can start traversing our matrix. So with a matrix, you traverse it by using a nested loop. So in our case, we can simply say for I in range rows, and then for J in range calls. And whoops, I made a mistake here. This should be I. So as we're looping through our matrix, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for land. And so we can have a conditional statement here. If grid I J, so the current coordinate that we're looking at, is equal to one, then we can perform breadth first search on it. But wait a second. Before we do that, we also have to make sure that this coordinate is not in our visited. And so we can add a second check. This will look like I, J, not in visited. That just lets us know that the current coordinate we're looking at hasn't already been looked at. And so if this criteria is met, then we can perform BFS on that coordinate. Now we haven't written our BFS function yet, so we'll do that after. But before we do that, after we successfully perform BFS, what do we want to do? Well, we want to increment our island count. So we can simply do island count plus equal one. And then after everything's said and done, we can return our island count. So now the only thing left to do is implement our BFS. So for simplicity's sake, I'll declare a helper function within numIslands function called BFS. 
So we'll declare BFS, which will take an input of I and J, which are our coordinates. And so remember, the first thing we have to do with the BFS function is declare our Q, because we need to have a starting point. And so based from that starting point, we'll look in other directions and then add those other coordinates to our Q and then process them continuously looking at neighboring coordinates or neighboring bits of land. We repeat this process until the island has been explored thoroughly and then we increment our island counter. So like I said, our Q has to have a starting point. So we can declare our Q variable like so and Python does have a built-in Q called dec. So let me just write that out real quick. We'll have dec and remember we have to give it a starting point. So our starting point will be i j. Now in order to get this dec we have to import it. So we can just say from collections import dec. Little typo right here. And so now that we have our starting point, we also have to add it to our visited. So visited.add will start it off with our initial coordinates as well. And then we continue our breadth first search as long as our queue is not empty. So we can just say while queue. So now that we're in the process of performing breadth first search, we have to dequeue the current coordinates so we can process it. So we can just say x, y equals q dot pop left. So just so you know, pop left means exactly what you think it is. It just removes the first item from our queue. And so now that we're dequeuing our current coordinate, we have to process that. So that means we have to look horizontally and vertically. So this is where our directions variable comes in. So as we're iterating through it, we can say for dx and dy in directions. So this gets us access to these coordinates right here. And we're gonna take these coordinates and add them to our current x and y to move them in a certain direction. In this case, down, up, right, or left. So we will redeclare our new coordinates as nx and y, which will be equal to x plus dx and y plus dy. So nx and ny are newly calculated coordinates, essentially the new areas that we're exploring. Afterwards, we have to declare a conditional. So this conditional essentially looks at these new coordinates nx and ny and essentially checks to see if they're within bounds and if this new coordinate is a one, so if it's land, and if we haven't visited these coordinates before. If that's the case, we explore outward, append the new coordinates to the queue, and then mark the next coordinate as visited. So that'll look like this. If zero is less than or equal to nx less than rows, and zero is less than or equal to ny, which is less than calls, and grid nx and ny, is equal to one, so we encounter a bit of land, and that coordinate, nx and y, is not visited. So not in visited. So again, this whole line is just checking to see if the next coordinate is within bounds, is part of the island, and is not in visited. At which point we will append the new coordinate, in this case, nx and y, to our queue, which allows us to continue with our BFS. And then of course we have to add it to our visited set. So visited.add nx and ny. And that should pretty much be it. This breadth first search will continue running on every island that we encounter. And then upon successfully exploring the entire island, we will increment our island count by one. We will do this as we explore our entire matrix grid. And then after everything's said and done, we will return our island count. So that's pretty much it. This is how you implement num islands in code. Now remember, the time and space complexity is the same, which is O of n times n, or rows times columns. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot, and make sure to check out my other LeetCode videos. In any case, I'll see you in the next one.